Almost everyone knows someone who at one time went to Central Tech. With its great architecture and history, this high school in the annex is a true Toronto landmark. But it goes much deeper than that. Central Tech paved the way for other technical schools right across Canada. I came in 1958, January, until 1994, and I found that really quite a hard decision to leave. I think I learned more in this institution in 22 and a half years than I did in any other institution I ever attended. I'm glad I came here. I couldn't imagine going anywhere else. If you're a student, staff, or graduate of Central Tech, you're part of a very unique legacy. This stately institution was the first school in Canada to fully offer technical education, laying the groundwork for many other schools in Canada. From the days of aircraft mechanics and nursing, to communications technology and electronic music in the here and now, Central Tech has come a long way preparing students for life after high school. Central Technical School started as a result of Toronto's rapid industrialization in the late 1800s. All of a sudden there was a need for skilled workers in the railroads, factories and industries. And with that came the need for a new kind of education, technical. So in 1891 the doors of the St. Lawrence Hall here at King and Jarvis Street swung open and history was made. 307 students signed up that first term taking courses in mathematics, chemistry, and drafting. Eventually, a permanent home for the school was needed, and the chosen spot was near the intersection of two now well-known streets, Bloor and Bathurst. Dr. A.C. McKay actually stepped down from his post as McMaster University Chancellor to accept a new role as principal. He went to Europe to really investigate different types of schools which were multi-oriented. They had an academic stream and also a technical stream. And after making tremendous investigations over a period of a year or so, he came back and instituted these. And in due course, people in technical schools in Europe were now coming to Toronto to investigate Central Tech because it had made such a mark. The groundbreaking was held in 1913, dignified by the presence of then-Canadian Prime Minister Sir Robert Borden. Central Technical School opened on August 31, 1915. The exterior was hand-cut of stone quarried in Orangeville by an Aberdonian with no education actually himself. But he came over in 1915, which is interesting, in the middle of the war and he hand cut every piece of stone that was the exterior facet. As a gift, the sculptor designed two gnomes above the front entrance. If you just uh, step outside there to the front as you're coming in, the sculptures and the different uh, types of, they have gargoyles and out there. I know a lot of people don't notice it right away, but it's just tremendous to look at. Built in the collegiate Gothic style, Central Tech was the largest school in the British Empire, covering the area bound by Lippincott, Harbord, Borden, and Lennox Streets. Overnight, it became a landmark in Toronto. Inside, the school is adorned with staircases of silver-gray marble, brass handrails, wide halls, and arched door entries. The original assembly hall off the main rotunda was the center of school activities. Rich in design, it was later transformed into a gymnasium. At Central Tech, the builders went the extra mile to make sure this school was entirely modern and up to date. 
This chemistry lab on the fourth floor has remained virtually the same since the school first opened. And this Bunsen burner looks like it's been here since then too. Central Tech has, from the very beginning, served the city during troubled times. When the Spanish flu swept through Toronto, taking many lives, Central Tech kitchens became a bottle sterilization center for the city. And during World War I and later World War II, Central Tech was fully involved in the war effort. When war was declared on September the 10th in Canada, there was a man with a bullhorn, I think a vice principal, who walked around the school saying, we are now at war. And those kids aged 15, you had to be 16, but they lied. They walked out of this school and joined up with the RAF. And two weeks later, those 15-year-olds were in England training. During the war, there was a shortage of specialized technicians. And as a result, Central Tech students signed up for the war emergency plan. At that time, the school was open around the clock with classes for civilian students during the day. But in the evening and at night, students in the military took classes in things like wireless operating and tank repair. Right outside this main building, students in the Army performed drills to get them ready for duties overseas. Women also played an important role during wartime and beyond, learning aircraft, sheet metal work, welding, and Morse code. When it came to socializing, Male and female students were often separated. Certain doors and stairs were reserved for use by females only, and meeting socially was often saved for football games or dances at the school gym. They had these saw cops, and then the, the boys would line up on one side and the girls on the other side, and uh, we'd get up and we'd dance. We jitterbugged, and uh, it was very social. We had uh, just about every other Friday uh, was a school dance. Throughout the decades, Central Tech reflected the changing Toronto. Toronto has bragged a lot about being the most multicultural city in the world. Well, Central Tech was there first. And I used to call this school a city within a city, and it is very much that so. In the 1950s, a major addition was erected on the south side of the school to recognize the contributions of Central Tech students during two world wars. The new wing included auto mechanic facilities, a new auditorium, and cafeteria. It also included an aircraft mechanics department, which was legendary. It started just before World War II and ended years ago, but at one time, students here actually built full-scale aircraft. They also built small-scale models of German and Japanese fighter planes. These model planes were then sent to cadet schools, such as West Point and all across North America. All those little cafeteria tables were covered with them. You could go in and there they'd all be ready to be packaged and sent. It was quite touching, actually, and you knew the boys were... It was life or death for those boys. They had to know what these planes were when they were coming at them. Central Tech has had a long-standing art tradition. In 1964, a new modern-style art building opened next to the main building. It was very well known uh, throughout North America and there were people coming in from the States to study here. Um, it was one of the finest art courses. The teachers were, uh, they were grand artists. I mean, Charlie Goldhammer covered the war and Peter Howarth, another one. Doris McCarthy, who's still going strong. It was a great time. Central Tech was so famous that the design for Canadian coins, including the quarter and the dime, were created right here in the 1930s. Later additions included a new Bathurst building and a large track, the setting of many sports triumphs. Football has been an important sport at Central with a long-standing rivalry against Northern Secondary. The next big win would have been against Northern uh, in 1987. Northern had beaten us by 40 points during the regular season, and our guys showed character and came back and beat them at Northern in the snow by one point in the semifinal. They went on to win the Metro Bowl that year. Over the years, Central Tech has had many students that have gone on to achieve greatness in sports. Some of the uh, more famous students at Central Tech uh, people would have heard about uh, 
right now presently uh, playing in the CFL is Adriano Belli at uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats and uh, Naughton Losher is out at uh, British Columbia Lions. He's the first Canadian to get a football scholarship to the University of Alabama. O'Neill Wilson is in uh, Montreal, the wide receiver with the Alouettes. Something students then and now comment on is the sheer mass of the building. Well, I know that our school takes up about four city blocks in downtown Toronto, and that is huge. You, you can't go past Central Tech without noticing it. Before you know it, Central Tech will celebrate another milestone in its long history, the 100th anniversary of the opening of its main building. Who knew that so much started from right here?